Ended up picking up those cargoes, so I copped that. I ended up getting all those pants. Ended up picking up, so I ended up copying. I ended up picking up, so I copped that too. Ended up picking up a couple items. Ended up copying that, ended up copying that. Slow down, baby. What? Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. And welcome back to my palace. My 18 square meter palace. So we're back in the hallway today with another video. This one's going to be a recent pickups type of style of video. As you guys may have seen in the intro, I have been doing a series of vintage shopping guide style videos over the past couple months. I've been living in Tokyo for the past six months and within that time I've been you know, able to cop, pick up, get, buy, whatever you want to say, some different pieces of great vintage clothing. So in today's video, we're pretty much going to be going through some of these pickups that I've made in all these different great areas within Tokyo. And then I'm going to try to construct some outfits using these items and also items that are already in my wardrobe as well. Pretty much for the upcoming sort of spring summer 2020 season or so. Without further ado, let's go. Structure this video will be I'll go through fit by fit. I start with the tops, bottoms, and finish off with the shoes and any sort of other accessories as well. So, place you go. Quite good, eh? Kind of good. All right, first fits. Starting with the top, we have this gray sweater. Episode five when I went back to Shimokitazawa for the second time. Ended up picking up this bad boy from a shop called Brick. Right, so let's delve into the details, eh? So this sweater is by a brand called St. John's Bay. Have not heard of them before, but it really comes in a sort of heathered type of material, heathered pattern. You probably can't see that on camera, but it's a very, very rigid type of sweater. It really just comes in that beautiful sort of light charcoal grey colorway. What really drew me to it was a couple of things. I think, first of all, the fit. So like, this is a size large. But for me, it really fits like, I would say an XL or even double XL. It's quite boxy. The key key details that really drew me to it also, but other than the fit, were the contrast sort of color. So as you guys may see, there's a bit of yellow lining on the collar that goes all the way around. And then to finish off at the top of the collar, you have sort of a darker charcoal gray, which I think really contrasts well with this sort of gray material. You have the same sort of detailing on the on the sleeves as well. Side slits at both sides of the garment. You kind of see that the back is a bit elongated. There's a bit of a drop, small drop tail at the back. There's a bit of, you know, toothpaste, vintage toothpaste stain, stain as well. <laughs> so this cost me 2,900 yen, which I think is a steal for, I guess, the quality, the fit. Alrighty, now I'm going to the bottoms. The bottoms. These guys. These pants were something that I've been looking for for a long time. Let's delve into the details, eh? So these are a genuine military pant from a brand called Winfield Manufacturing Co. It comes in that it's just a beautiful forest olive green colorway. It's very functional. You got your two sort of front pockets on the side with button finishes. Pretty small to be honest. You can kind of put like a handkerchief in there for example. As you go down the pant a bit more, you have sort of a thigh, two thigh pockets on both sides. Again, very useful. I usually put my wallet in there. And within those sort of thigh pockets, you have these sort of suspender strings in both pockets. And I think, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think you sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of, <laughs> you're sort of supposed to attach them to the waistband kind of thing. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. I haven't actually done it before. I usually leave these sort of suspenders inside, but uh, might give it a go sometime. At the back you have again two sort of, just two back pockets with button finishes. Really drew me to this actually, obviously other than the, the colour was the bottom of these garments. So as you guys can see, you got a bit of an elastic sort of finish, sort of cuff at the bottom. And when you leave it undone it pretty much flares out, it has a sort of a flare type of fit. But then you have these beautiful and very handy drawstrings. What, so what I usually do is you just pull them like that. Pretty much just how you want to sort of make it fit in terms of how tight and how tapered you want it. And I just tie them up. I got these in a size, I think they were size 32. For reference, I'm around 5 foot 9 and around 80 kgs. Put you in a bubble bath, I put some water wings on you and I, I'd smack your little bottom. But listen, here's what we do guys, here's <laughs> easy. Overall this set me back 
I live in Thousand Years. I got this from Chicago and Harajuku, one of the many Chicago's around Harajuku. Last piece of this first outfit, the zapatos or the shoes. These are the New Balance 801 All Terrains. I'm not much of a sneakerhead to be honest with you. I probably pick up one to two pairs of sneakers max per year. I was tossing up between these and actually a pair of Air Max 95s. Air Max 95s were about I think 25,000 yen at Kickslab. Again they looked really good though. I didn't have a pair of 95s. And then on, next to that shelf I sort of saw these guys and I was like oh wow these look pretty cool as well. They could sort of have a similar type of vibe in terms of like the hiking type of terrain, ruggedness kind of look. I looked at the price and these were around 12,000 yen. I was like wow. Oh, wow. So pretty much you know, half price to the 95s, I was like, I, I haven't never owned a pair of New Balance before in my life, so I was like, might as well give it a shot. I tried it on and yep, I picked it up. So that is the first outfit, guys. First. <laughs> so that is outfit number one. Let me know what you guys think. Next Garmin, so this is a sort of plaid button up overshirt or shacket slash jacket with a bit of inside wool type lining. I got this from Shimu Kitazawa back in December, my second vintage episodes, vintage shopping guides episode, and let's delve into the details, eh? This is by a brand called Northcrest, size large, comes in that sort of beautiful sort of lumberjack sort of green plaid tartan type of print all over the body. It's pretty much a button-up, sort of play button-up, checkered button-up, but as lined, it has some very nice padding inside as well, and as we can, you can see, a bit of sort of fake fur type of Sherpa type effect there as well. Some other details you have, the two front pockets on both sides, sort of button closure at, at, the, at the sleeves, at the end of the sleeves. Nothing on the back, just a plain back with that sort of beautiful checkered play design. Again, this is a quite a relatively heavy jacket than what it probably looks like on camera, so it's really perfect for keeping warm at the spring sort of summer nights. This sent me back around 4,000 yen, pretty good value. Okay, for the bottoms of this fit, we have these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Carhartt Relax Fit jeans. So let's delve into the details, eh? Well, I picked these bad boys up from a shop called The Apartment. These guys are based on Kichi Joji. Definitely one of the coolest, coolest shops in Tokyo. So if you're ever in Kichijoji, definitely check the apartment out. It's a bit out of the way from all the sort of other vintage shops in Kichijoji, but definitely check it out. It's a very small hole in the wall place. So from my understanding of the apartment, it's not necessarily a vintage shop, but they do import all the stock directly from New York as well. They have a great relationship with some guys in New York. ASAP Ferg is always, I think sometimes on the Instagram and wearing some of their stuff too. These guys are real gangster, and they have their different Nike pieces, North Face, Carhartt as you can see, a lot of different items. I've been looking for just a really, a, a nice pair of relaxed fitted, solid pair of jeans, and these really pretty much fit the bill. So the way these fit, they actually fit probably the best fitting jeans I've ever had, so they sit perfectly above the waist. They have a pretty relaxed sort of fit from the sort of that thigh up until your knee, and then they actually taper down as you go towards the ankle. I got these in a 30 length, so they, they pretty much sit perfectly above any sort of sneakers or shoes that I'm wearing as well. So at the front of the garments, you have a lot of nice detailing, so two side pockets, with sort of Carhartt embroidered, you got a Carhartt button on the fly right there, you got your typical sort of YKK, YKK zipper on the zip fly as well, signature sort of leather logo, these sent me back around 9,000 yen. Definitely worth it. Carhartt Relax Fit jeans from the apartment. Let's go. All right, for the shoes to finish off the fit, I have these beautiful, beautiful Doc Martin 1461s with the typical three eyelets, whatever you want to call it. I picked these up from a shop called Pat Menzies back home in Auckland, New Zealand. Pat Menzies is just one of the OG sort of sneaker and footwear places. I bought some Clark Desert boots from them, I bought some Vans from them. Definitely recommend if you're ever in Auckland looking for a decent pair of sneakers and just even formal shoes as well, do you check out Pat Menzies. They're on Queen Street, the main street in Auckland. I was just looking for, I think I bought these sometime last year in 2019. I was pretty much looking for a black leather shoe, something of this sort of silhouette. So to be perfectly honest, it's probably not the most comfortable shoe 
<laughs> especially I'm sure you guys have heard of the break-in period with these types of shoes with things that are really really tough leather you buy them brand new the first couple of times even a week that you wear them when you're when the back of your foot hits the back of the shoe your skin kind of falls off and kind of grazes off it hurts like hell um, but it's just part of you wearing the shoe in and it's definitely something to keep in mind when you buy this type of uh, type of footwear and, and type of material. These sent me back around, I don't know, 280 to 300 New Zealand dollars. No idea what that is in these <laughs> this day and age because of Corona. But probably no over 200 plus US dollars. So not too bad. I think something different from the typical sort of Doc Martin 1460s or even sort of those high cut Doc Martin boots as well. Definitely a great alternative to that style. Versatile, sleek. It's a good man. So that is the next fit. Let me think. <laughs> Let me think. Let me know what you guys think. Hey guys, it's me. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually editing this video right now, in the middle of editing this video right now, and unfortunately, my MacBook is running out of space, so for outfit number three, I won't be able to include too much details of the items that I picked up. Let's talk about this, man. Hold on. No, 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 no. What do you mean? So sorry in advance. Apologies. Cool story, bro. Thanks for telling us. Good to know. We don't care. <laughs> Let's get back into it, eh? Dickie's worker jacket in that beautiful navy. Beautiful navy. Hey, for the bottoms, I've got these beautiful vintage Dickies worker pants and a chocolate brown colorway. I picked these up in Kichi Georgie in episode 3 of my vintage shopping guides sort of series. for today's video thank you thank you thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it that was pretty much an overview of some of my recent pickups that i've made over the past couple months here in tokyo and i guess a bit of outfit action thank you thank you again guy i keep i keep saying thank you and you know, i'm not a professional youtuber obviously i have a full-time job luckily uh, as a salary man um here in tokyo and back when i was in new zealand as well and this is pretty much a hobby you know something that i really really enjoy doing in terms of making content and kind of getting a bit better in front of the camera hopefully just given what's going on in the world right now i you know honestly youtube and making content it's really keeping me sane really keeping me sane in, in terms of from a mental perspective from a from a physical perspective and you know whenever i because of that whenever i receive you know positive feedback and 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 People say that they enjoy it, they find it informative and helpful and useful in some way, and they're even just watching it and, and people taking the time out of the day to watch it uh, just means the world to me and it's really keeping me going. I hope everyone is safe, I hope your friends are safe, your families are safe, I hope your countries are doing okay as well. Take care everyone, uh, thank you again for watching, I truly honestly just appreciate it to the world and back. Continue to stay positive, continue to celebrate your wins and god bless and uh see you guys in the next next video looking forward to it cheers and also just want to wish my mum a happy birthday miss you mum love you mum hope you had a great day see you soon huh <laughs>